You probably know it as the Acock neighborhood. In fact, most of the signs still say it is. But in fact, this neighborhood near downtown Greensboro is now called Dunleith neighborhood. And a lot of thought went into that name change. David, tell us about this neighborhood. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a really desirable neighborhood, mostly because it actually is a neighborhood, right? And so we have sidewalks. We have all kinds of families in here. There are children who actually play in the street, believe it or not. You know, it's one of some, a, a, a kind of neighborhood I actually grew up in England. So it's a, it very much is a, a, a neighborhood, a community. Um, people look after each other with nice houses. Can you talk a little bit about how the neighborhood came together to kind of lobby for this change and changing the name? That's a big deal and, and a real kind of testament to neighborhood cohesiveness. Yeah, that was quite tricky. Um, well, because there was a lot of passion about it. A lot of, there are people in the neighborhood who actually grew up uh, when it was called the ACOC Historic District and, you know, and who'd been to the school when it was called the ACOC School. Um, so, you know, we, we basically knew that there was rumblings about changing the name from when, um, from when uh, UNCG decided to change the name of the, of the auditorium. And when people think about historic neighborhoods, that's what they think about, old houses, and that's the term. But there's more to it than the houses. There's a lot of history on this land. Yeah, that, that we, uh, there's, um, we were doing, working on a, I can't remember if we call it a vision statement or a mission statement, but uh, we were trying to get a succinct phrase that, that, that captures something about us, and we just simply caught, used the phrase, history matters. You know, and that, that plays up, up in all kinds of ways. So we're, you know, we're, we're very interested in our history, there are at least two or three people in the neighborhood have been basically tracking, you know, how this neighborhood came to be and, you know, and, 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 and look, keeping records of recent history, that sort of thing. So, but in the change of the name, I, I, I basically wanted to follow what, what the Board of Education did. But we, it was tricky because you had, you know, you really had strong voices saying we want to keep it ACOC even after the school had changed its name. Then we had a, uh, a whole neighbourhood meeting. We got the city to help us actually put something out to invite everybody. Everybody got a flyer and email, anything we could do. Um, we, we used Nextdoor as a way of trying to get people out. We had 50 plus people turn out from the neighbourhood for the meeting. So we eventually got on the city council's um, agenda. Resolution renaming the Charles B. Acock Historic District and revising reference in the historic guidelines. David Wharton, who was the historian, he's on the board and he'd done a lot of history and research about it. And so he was, I said, you present uh, to, the, to the council. And before he even opened his mouth, one of the council women said, Robert Dick was a slave owner, wasn't he? But this new gentleman, did he own slaves? He did. So you're changing from a segregationist to a slave owner, his name. And he was, you know, um, as, as many people were in them days. And, and then we sort of, it was interesting because Yvonne Johnson was really articulated. She sort of stopped that. She said, take a look at, you know, what happened. He, yes, he was a slave owner, but then uh, when all his, his uh, slaves were freed. He freed all his slaves. Some of them were taken on, given wages, and some others were deeded some of the property. Wow. He owned slaves, and somehow some he had, there were some impacts that changed his life and his way of thinking, and ended up giving or willing some of his property to some of those African Americans and paying the others. Is that what you're saying? It's, so I think there, there are pros and cons to it, um, but it's also a very uh, encouraging and hopeful picture to me. And of course, but you didn't name it after the person. You okay. named it after the estate. And that's one of the things we were trying to do. We want to say, what is, you know, we're, we're named it after the place rather than the person. That was, we always worried about naming it after a person, after what had happened before. Right. And what do we dig up now? And we also want to be transparent. You know, when people ask us about, yeah, this is a guy, saw things this way, switched and basically was, you know, an upstanding citizen in all kinds of respects. And Which is sort of what we've done here. Right, exactly. Right. And so we wanted to try and do the same thing. So we got a 9-0 vote. 
uh, in favor of us changing the name. What do you want people to take away from this neighborhood when they drive by, when they walk by, when they see the name? Well, the, uh, uh, when they see the name, they, uh, we want to associate it with, it's one of the discussions we had, we want neighborhood to be prominent. Uh, that they feel they're actually in the neighborhood. They feel there's something about something different about it. I mean, you know, we've done all kinds of things. The see, see the street lighting? Right. Like the old-fashioned, they'll eventually have to change. Uh, right. Like old-fashioned gas lighting in some way. So you get that feel in the evening that it's like that. And, you know, a safe place for, for children to grow up. I mean, this, when I heard stories about what it was like here many years ago, it wasn't particularly a safe place to be, and, and, and it very much is now. Signs of the new neighborhood are sprouting up all around, proving that this is the Dunleith neighborhood now. In fact, if you wander just behind this community garden, you'll actually see some remnants of the original Dunleith estate. So the history is very much alive in this Greensboro neighborhood. Find out a little bit more about it by going to dunleith.org.